It is time to talk all things New York Jets football. It is time to focus on the Jets and the NFL draft. The Senior Bowl is upon us, and our next guest who comes on every week will be at the Senior Bowl covering the Jets and the Lions coaching staffs, and more importantly, covering all the elite draft prospects that will be there. The Jets have announced their coaching staff, the assignments for who's coaching what. The head coach, Ron Middleton, baby. He's going to be coaching the Jets team. Of course, Dan Campbell and Rob Sala, Lions head coach and Jets head coach. They're going to be in advisory roles throughout the week. So the position coaches for both squads get an opportunity to coach up the prospects at the game. So we're going to talk senior bowl. We're going to talk draft. And at the end of this video, make sure you stay for the whole thing. Cole Thompson, who is our guest in his weekly spot, he's going to be answering some of your Jets and draft questions as we go. So let's, without a, wasting any more time, I talk too much, let's bring on the great Cole Thompson right now from Sports Illustrated. He's got his coffee, he's ready to go, and Cole, you'll be at the Senior Bowl. You've been there many times. What's the excitement level, man? This is a big one. Uh, you got to remember that last season we didn't get to go do everything with the Senior Bowl. A lot of it was also on Zoom because of, of course, COVID-19. So all protocols are back to normal. You get to be at practice. You get to be a little bit more hands-on with the players. You get to be a little bit more pulling them aside for media days. It's a little bit more one-on-one -on -one connection with them as well. It's a really big deal, and it's really nice to be able to have two coaches that I think are going to be staples in the NFL for a very long time, Robert Sala and Dan Campbell. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, being down there, I think it's going to be really interesting to see them. And I think it's going to be really interesting about how the coaching staffs are this year because if they are not the head coaches for the game. They are just there as aficionados sitting on the sidelines, talking to fans, talking to players, personnel, figuring out what they want to build with their rosters. That, I think, is the really cool part. And that's something that I think Jim Nagy needs a lot of credit for he, him being able to do this with the process, giving the coaches a little bit more time away from the facility. That way they get to actually sit and learn. So let's talk about the Jets coaching staff here. Rob Sala announced his coaching assignments for the Senior Bowl head coach. I mentioned it at the top of the video. Ron Middleton, baby, who's normally the Jets tight end coach. The offensive coordinator, Rob Calabrese, Long Island's own. He'll be the quarterback coach, or he's the Jets quarterback coach, and he's going to be the offensive coordinator this week. And the Jets linebacker coach, Mike Ruttenberg, he's going to be the defensive coordinator. So all the Jets coaching staffs, they're going to be there. And obviously, Salo, the Fleur, Ulbrich, they get a chance to kind of scout and look from afar and then get the opportunity to, uh, you know, evaluate players and not have the hands-on coaching stuff that some of the assistants get to do. So we'll answer your questions at the end. We'll talk about some options for the Jets, certainly at number four and number 10. But Cole, dropping in Sports Illustrated's uh, websites throughout the country on Monday is a breakdown on the top 50 players participating at the Senior Bowl. So you could take this question wherever you want to go with it. Give us some names that you are looking at. Who are your top players to watch at the Senior Bowl? All right, so you can go ahead and read this all on Monday. Let's go ahead and start this off. Number one on my list is Devin Lloyd. He is my number one linebacker in the class. I think that he is a little bit more of a good sideline to sideline, overall complete player than N'Kobe Dean out of Georgia. I love Dean. I think that Dean is a great player, but his ability to, I think, really, what he's been able to do this past year in coverage sort of solidifies him right now as my linebacker one. He, I think, right now is number 11 on my big board. I think he's the number one player to watch for. Thumper can do a lot off the edge. I see him as a three down linebacker. Dave one starter at the next level would love to see the jets if they were in a trade back situation maybe if they free up some cap space maybe move off of a former linebacker that they don't fit fits their system anymore go ahead and get him number two for me is roger mccreary out of auburn i love this kid i think this is an absolute dominant cornerback gonna make a huge name for himself the mobile native a guy who right out of mobile gonna represent the 251 in his own backyard is gonna be really cool really good press corner really good guy if you want him for man coverage He's going to be at the line of scrimmage, knocking the crap out of wide receivers. And keep in mind, he's been in the college level for the last four years, been a starter for the last three years, has gone up against a plethora of talent at wide receiver, including Traylon Burks, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, Jamison Williams. Uh, we could throw in a couple of other guys, uh, um, uh, Devonta Smith. Jalen Waddle, he's been going at this for years and years and years. He has honed in his craft. I do believe that he is going to earn himself a lot of money this upcoming weekend. I'm very excited for him. Number three, Kenny Pickett. Um, listen, I'm not going to get into much of this because you guys have Zach Wilson, so you don't really need to worry about
about the quarterback position, but I do think that Pickett is the best quarterback going down to Mobile. Number four, Trevor Penning out of Northern Iowa. Don't let the FCS name fool you. This is an exceptional player who does really, really well in the run game. He helped the uh, Panthers, I think, average 4.9 yards per run. That's a big, big upgrade from what you saw in year uh, from last year. The six foot seven offensive tackle has also played both the left and right side, so he's very exceptional. Got a good pad level as well. It keeps his footwork pretty well. I'm very excited to see him in person. Jermaine Johnson from uh, Florida State comes in at number five. I think that he is a 4-3 defensive end. That's his more natural position. But if you watched him this past year, when he was making the jump over from Athens to Tallahassee, he greatly improved 11.5 sacks, 17.5 tackles for losses. His ability to play the run and come off the gap is really, really intriguing. I'm very excited to see what he can do playing in this 4-3 system. I believe he is on the uh, Detroit Lions staff, if I'm not mistaken. So they run a base 4-3. I would not be shocked if they want to go a different direction with their first pick or in a trade back situation, they go ahead and they address that need at pick number 27, where they're currently selecting could be pick number 32. That was exactly kind of the range. I look at him real fast to close out the top 10, just going really, uh, really, really quickly with this. If you want to know more about them, you can read it on Monday. That's when it's going to drop. Uh, Jahad Dotson coming out of Penn state, really good wide receiver. Reminds me a lot of Deontay Johnson for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Bernhard Raymond, the central Michigan prospect. This is a former tight end six foot eight mountain of a man who is going to hopefully make that similar impact at the next level as a left tackle needs a little bit more a time to adjust to uh, NFL style of, um, of an offensive line blocking, but from an athletic standpoint, he is an absolute name to watch for. Number eight, Trey McBride, arguably the best tight end in the class, in my opinion. He's a prototypical old school guy, can go ahead and block, does a really good job of closing the gap against outside linebackers, is a really good route runner, solidified hands. I think that his hands are better than his routes, but I do think that he can keep it going. Uh, number nine, I have Daniel Falalale, who is the offensive tackle out of Minnesota. What a name. Been, uh, what's up? What a name. <laughs> if you think that Bernard Raymond is big, this guy is six foot nine, plays, has only been playing football since 2016. One of these guys that uh, could be a Julian Davenport, you know, a guy who we thought was going to be a superstar, never really panned out, could also be an absolute freak of nature on the right side. Really good run blocker. And then coming in at number 10 for me, Cameron Thomas from San Diego State. Nobody wants to talk about this kid. I view him, I actually was telling, telling you about him yesterday. Uh, this is a guy who finished number two in the country in tackles for losses with 22.5. He also upgraded his sack total from a uh, from one and a half in 2020 to 10.5 in 2021. He is an absolute freak of nature. I love him for a 4-3 defense. And honestly, I expect the Jets to fall in love with this type of player. He is a guy who's going to be a really nice comparison to go along with JFM, go along with Quinn and Williams, go along with Carl Lawson. And if Lawson is going to be a name to watch for as a pass rusher, you need to go ahead and get yourself a great run stopper. You're not going to find much better than Cameron Thomas. Let's talk more about the tight end spot. That is arguably the Jets' biggest need on offense. They need a lot. They obviously need to get better weapons around Zach Wilson. But the tight end room they put out this year was a joke. And every Jet fan wants them to sign a tight end and drive the tight end. You said McBride's your number one. Give us the breakdown on Jeremy Ruckert, tight end from Ohio State. And there's a couple other tight ends I know that are on your big board as well. So let's talk about Jeremy Rucker. The biggest thing with him that I think that people are going to want to know, how is he going to be able to adapt as an actual pass catcher? One of the biggest things that you notice about an Ohio State offense is they don't really utilize the run. Uh, they don't really utilize the tight end position as we would probably expect them to. But in moments, you did get to see Jeremy Rucker have big time plays. I think that he had four or five plays of over 20 plus yards this past season. So he does make a lot of good, good plays when he's out there. A uh, really good red zone blocker, really good job of closing the gap pretty well. Uh, Staten Island native. So there's a lot of ties with the New York Jets there. The one thing that I really like about his overall game is that he is a good red zone target. I think he is a mismatch for linebackers. And I think he's a really big mismatch for, uh, for safeties when they're asking him to play in the red zone. I think he's going to be a short yarded situation. If he can be a guy that really makes a good fit on third down, I'm very excited to see what he can do. I think he's a very, very good complimentary tight end. It reminds me a lot of Blake Jarwin coming out of uh, Oklahoma State, now with the Dallas Cowboys. I want to go talk about Jake Ferguson, though. That is the name that I honestly think that every single Jets fan should know. If you're going to go ahead and, and absolutely try to use more 12-man personnel 
this is the guy that you want to pair along with him. When I look at Dalton Schultz, who's a name that's going to be looked at, David Njoku, who's going to be a name that's going to be looked at by the team, Evan Ingram potentially as a flex tight end, you want to be able to go get your well-rounded traditional wide tight end. Jake Ferguson out of Wisconsin fits that bill number two on the team in receiving yards this past year. I think that from an athletic standpoint, he is one of the better guys. I think that he can play a lot of different positions, the H back, the Y back, the, um, uh, the flex position. You can line him outside on the deep end. I think that he is a very good blocker. He does not get enough compliments on that. But I do think that he needs to be able to get a little bit more separation. One of those things that I'm very interested in seeing is how is he going to be able to play against those slot cornerbacks, those bigger guys like a Jalen Petrie on a Baylor kind of t- name. One of these hybrid type players doesn't really have a position. How is he going to be able to line up against weak side linebackers? How is he going to be able to create separation on third down across the middle of the field? Really good name to watch for when you're looking in the red zone, but can he be that complete target? And then if you want to go with a guy who's maybe like an Evan Ingram, Cole Turner. I mean, Cole Turner is going to be a name that I think a lot of people are going to fall in love with this upcoming weekend out of Nevada. He was a wide receiver transition into the air raid offense that made him more of a flex option. Reminds me a lot of Mike Gusecki, probably a little bit more though of, um, of actually an Evan Ingram, six foot six, really good guy who's able to win battles and contested catches. I think that the biggest thing for him is he uses his size often to his ability, often utilized as a wide receiver. And you got to realize right now, especially when you're utilizing these 12 man personnel, if you're going to get a guy to be a difference maker, you want to be able to start winning in the slot. And with a young quarterback like Zach Wilson, who's going to want to probably run a little bit more RPO next year, when you can get that ball out really quickly to a six foot six tight end across the middle of the field, it doesn't matter if he's a wide receiver. It doesn't matter if he's a tight end. It matters if he's a playmaker. That's exactly what you have with Cole Turner. I really do like this tight end class. The problem is for me, there's a giant drop off between Trey McBride and the next guy. I want to be able to see who's going to make that next job because Jalen Weidemeyer, I think out of Texas A&M, probably is next online for me, but he's not going to be able to be there because he's a junior. One of these guys can really step up. Charlie Kohler, Isaiah Likely, uh, Jeremy Rucker, Jake Ferguson, Trey, uh, 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 Jer- uh, um, Garrett Calatana from uh, SMU, guy that retired from football, came back to play because of he just loved the game so much. There's a lot of talent on there. Who is going to be the one that starts to step up and be the next guy? So here's the question I now have, and if you have a question for Cole to answer, write it in the chat box, and we'll get to it as we go here. And a reminder, if you have a super chat, no matter what we're talking about, you cut the line, and that money goes right to Cole for being willing to come on every single week throughout the offseason. But this question, I think, is important here, right? How will the Senior Bowl impact the Jets' draft plans? Obviously, if they like certain prospects, they have the opportunity to draft them. But you know, in your top 50 list that we were briefly hitting on at the top of this video – You have Kenny Pickett going number three right now as far as, you know, the top player that's at the Senior Bowl. Let's say he balls out in this at the Senior Bowl like Mac Jones did, like Daniel Jones did. We keep hearing about how this quarterback class, there's not going to be anyone that's going to go in the top five. Maybe the first quarterback doesn't come off the board till after the top ten. I find that hard to believe, but because I think by the time we get to April, there's going to be a couple teams that fall in love with one of these players. Do you think Pickett's the guy that teams would be willing to maybe even move up for? Maybe move up to number three with Houston? And then that means Hutchinson or Thibodeau is potentially there for the Jets at four. Or maybe the Jets get an offer to move back if a team wants to come all the way up to four and then they can make out like a bandit with extra picks. Well, say that you are falling in love with a guy like, um, let's go with uh, Tyler Linderbaum. Let, let, let's just say that Tyler Linderbaum is your guy. Or let's just say it is Kyle Hamilton is the guy. Let's say that that's the guy that you really love. I've said this multiple times. I think number three, number four is way too high for a safety. I do think it does a little too high for a center. I don't think pick number seven, pick number eight, pick number nine is too high for either of those positions. Top 10 for two potentially top tier players at a position of need for the New York Jets absolutely is a big deal. But the biggest question mark is who balls out at the senior bowl and who makes that next big jump. Because if I look at a guy like Kenny Pickett, and I do believe that he is going to have a very impressive day. I look at his mechanics. I look at his tools. Everyone wants to talk about the hand size. Okay, I have small hands. Guess what? I can utilize them, do this all the time. And get, and I use my hand signals for fun. So, you know, I mean, that's a big deal. You're not it's, a quarterback, though, man. You, you, but, can't, you can't play NFL quarterback. But let's just say that all the intangibles are there. Let's say that the throws are on point. Let's say that the accuracy is not an issue. Let's say that the zip is not super strong. Strong, but it's strong enough to where he can be a starting caliber quarterback week one, maybe week two by the NFL season. A team is going to go ahead and trade up for that. And once you start seeing teams trade up, you're going to have to start seeing that a little bit more. So say the Atlanta Falcons are absolutely in love with Kenny Pickett and they want him to sit for a full year. 
Well, if you get an offer for a first round pick this year, a first round pick next year, and a second round pick this year, you're moving back to eight. You're going to be in line to probably get somebody out there who is, at least in my personal opinion, worthy of that number eight selection. That could be a Tyler Linderbaum. That could be a Kyle Hamilton. And it looks less like you're reaching. It looks more like you're actually saying that there is a, a tremendous value and you're getting the player you wanted while also garnering picks. It really does matter how Kenny Pickett improves, but also how the other guys improve. How does Matt Corral look at the NFL Combine? How does Malik Willis look at the, uh, at the Senior Bowl? How does Sam Howell, a guy that everyone said, number one quarterback going into this year? Absolutely. Hey, I'm going to stop you right here. Keep going through your draft plans. I got people at my apartment ringing the doorbell because they got to do some sort of inspection that they just threw on me with no with no notice. So give me give me like hopefully a minute or so. You keep rattling off the draft stuff, and you'll see a bunch of questions in the comments. And feel free to just address whatever you got to address. That works. There we go. Perfect. All, All right. right. So let's give, give me a so minute go, here. The Colt so Thompson takeover is happening right now. Let's go. Here we go. Cole Thompson filling on it for the Jake Asman show. Guys, here's the reality of it. When you look at positional value, I think that it does matter. So it really also matters what is the quarterback position. One of the biggest things that you always start to see is when one team trades up for a certain player, another team will start to fall. They understand that this is where the run starts. So say you are the Atlanta Falcons, say you are the New York Giants, say you are potentially even um Let's just go with a wild card out there. Maybe you're the uh, Washington football team and you want to move up to number four. What you have to do is you have to understand that if your positional value is available, where you're going to select them, it doesn't really matter. And people talk about this all the time. Quentin Nelson, he was an absolute dominant player, and he is arguably one of the best offensive linemen, not guards, linemen in the NFL today. So when I look at a guy like Tyler Linderbaum, if he is available for me at, say, pick number 10, guess what? That to me is not a reach. It is an absolute steal. Now you can also move back, garner a few more picks in the process, be able to help build your roster. And here's the big kicker. When you look right now at the New York Jets, you're not a player away. You're not two players away. You're not three players away. You going into free agency are about 10 to 12 players away from actually getting to about eight or nine wins. After that, you're probably about two or three players away from being in that contention to maybe be the number two team in the AFC East. Go ahead, move back, get as many picks as possible. And what's really interesting about this is what I really love about always trading back. When you get more picks, you're allowed to maybe reach a little bit on another player. And if you reach on a player, nobody's going to complain because if you've got that extra draft pick for it. So somebody who is probably not on your draft board whatsoever because if you realized, oh, at pick number four, it's a little too rich. It isn't that rich at pick number 11, and it isn't that rich at pick number 27. And say you really fall in love with a player that's going to be available on the late end of picks, you can always package deals to move back up into the first round, i.e. Trey McBride, to go pair along with your tight ends, and that way you have that draft capital to move. So I'm always a proponent of training back, but the biggest thing that you have to do is you have to see quarterback play be really impressive down in Mobile, which I do believe that you are going to see one or two guys really stand out. I'm back. They uh, <laughs> needed to do an inspection. And by they, one person came in, realized I was doing a show. And said, like, oh, I just need to take a picture of your living room and the kitchen. And then I'll fill out the paperwork when I get back to the office. I'm like, wonderful. I'm like, so I don't know what I missed. It sounds like you're talking about trading back. I agree with you, Cole. The Jets could trade back. I'm certainly open to it. Let's let's kind of go big picture now, though, right? Because there's all these mocks that are coming out. Well, I ask you every week how you think things potentially could change. Right now, the Jets have two picks in the top 10, number four and number 10. If you're the Jets, how do you see it playing out? And we'll continue to ask you every week because a lot could happen between now and late April. I think you take BP at number four if you're not trading back. So whatever that is, if it's Evan Neal, by all means, go get Evan Neal. If it's Iki Kwamu out of NC State, by all means, go ahead and get Iki Kwamu. You want to what? I actually love Iki Kwamu for the Jets more than Evan Neal for one reason. If you're going to keep George Fant at tackle, Iki Kwamu can play guard for at least a year. Figure out what you want to do with that position. Figure out what you want to do with Mekhi Becton. Figure out what you want to do with George Fan. Get another awesome pass blocker and a guy who can be an immediate factor in your run game and your pass protection for Zach Wilson. That would also be my pick of the two only for that reason. But if you're willing to move off Fan, if you're willing to move off Becton this offseason, go ahead and get Evan Neal. If by some miracle Kayvon Thibodeau falls to you guys, celebrate right now. Joe Douglas, run to the podium. Be the kid. You just, you're, 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 you're Charlie from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Run home and never be. Never be surprised with anything like that. Go ahead and get that guy. If it's George Karloftis, I'm going to tell you guys right now, 
George Karloftis reminds me so much of Trey Hendrickson coming out of uh, the New Orleans Saints last year. And then everyone said, oh, Ger you know, Trey Hendrickson had a really good season. Bro, he just developed a little bit later than everybody else. I said when he was drafted by New Orleans, steal up third round. Absolute star player now with the new uh, now with the Cincinnati Bengals. Bro, so damn good. I mean, he has just come on so strong. Wouldn't you want to pair that with Carl Lawson? Wouldn't you want to have that? I mean, that to me makes a lot of sense. And then at pick number 10, you know, honestly, I think you go cornerback. I really do. I really think that you need to go get yourself a bona fide number one cornerback. I have said since the beginning, I really love Sauce Gardner. I think that Sauce Gardner is the name that you're going to fall in love with in the draft process. Guy does not matter if he played against number one talent, FC, FCS talent, that group of five talent. Look at the likes of potentially, you know, Alabama. He went toe to toe with the, the uh, with um, the, some, several of the younger players. He also limited jo uh, Jameson Williams to one catch when he was playing on his side of the field. Kobe Bryant was on the other side. He a lot of big catch with that way. I look right now, and I think that that's probably the pick you got to go. I know that Tyler Linderbaum would absolutely be a steal at number 10, but you look at Joe Shane, you look at the hire that was just made by the New York Giants. What was the biggest thing that you saw be the success factor of Josh Allen? Number one, getting an immediate pickup at offense coordinator and quarterbacks coach, which nobody is giving Ken Dorsey a lot of credit for. Ken Dorsey was the main reason why you saw success from Cam Newton on his 2015 MVP season. That was the main reason. They got them in there, but they also built the offensive line. They put an emphasis on drafting offensive linemen very early in the class. I honestly don't think that you're going to be able to see Tyler Linderbaum get past pick number seven for that exact reason. I absolutely do think so. Like that, That's what happens. So I say go cornerback. And if Sauce Gardner's there, I mean, honestly, he reminds me so much of a shutdown Xavier Rhodes when he was at his prime. Uh, I think that he has a little bit of Richard Sherman to his game. I really do think that his best ability is his tracking skills and to be able to cover, uh, you know, cover players downfield. Really good press corner. Did not allow a touchdown in all three years as a starter. People are going to say that, oh, yeah, you know what? It's a name that we probably need to watch out for because of, uh, you know, he played at smaller school prospect. He didn't allow a touchdown. I don't really care what you, what's what level you play at. You did not allow a touchdown in coverage. He is an absolute bona fide, in my opinion, number one cornerback and should be the pick at number 10 as be, of right now. Yeah, I, I'd be good with that. No doubt about it. I guess it depends on what the Jets do in free agency to get some weapons for Zach Wilson. Like if you tell me they have Dalton Schultz and they bring back Berrios and they maybe re-sign or they sign another veteran that can come in and be solid. And then, you know, they use the second round to draft the receiver. There's a lot of good wide receivers in this draft. You could end up with John Mechie in the second round or Jameson Williams slips and maybe you trade back into round one. Dude, to get you him. could end up with John Mechie in round four, potentially, if he doesn't test well. I mean, you could get a guy like him later than even that, and you're going to have picks to be able to utilize him. Right. And you also have a lot of picks to where you can go ahead and reach and no one's going to care. Yeah, I totally agree. So let's uh, let's get through the first of hopefully many super chats here. The art of pimping. Ten bucks to the Cole Thompson fund, baby. Uh, if Neil is by far the best tackle in the draft class or is close with another prospect, uh, he wants to know if so that's his question. Is Neil the best tackle in the draft class or is he close with another prospect? That's a, that. Okay, so here's so here's the thing. Neil is the best tackle prospect in the class, in my personal opinion. I think that Evan Neal, from a tackle perspective, you have to play him on the outside. He is a better fit at the left side or the right side. It doesn't really matter. His pass protection is the best of anyone I've seen. I think he needs to get a little bit better in run blocking, but overall his versatility playing in Alabama, left and right. Uh, I honestly do think that he is the best tackle. But if you're asking me who is the best offensive lineman of the two that I would take, I would take Icky Kwame. I actually would because Icky, I think, can play inside. I think you can shift him inside very early on if he becomes an absolute beast and a guard. Do you plan that right guard next year? Because that's that's what yeah. would happen. Because I think Beckton's going to be the left tackle, assuming he's healthy. They're going to bring back Fan, and then could you put? Iguano at right guard. For that's what I would do. That's yeah. what I, that, that, that's exactly what I would do. And that's the reason I would go after Ike Kwame if you're a Jets fan, because of you want to what I view him better as a run blocker. I think that you need to upgrade the run, uh, the rushing attack next year, more so because of you don't want to have all the pressure being on Zach Wilson's shoulders after what I would call a promising ending to a mixed overall season from him. You want to be able to at least utilize the run game. And think about this. Mike LaFleur and Robert Sala do come from that Kyle Shanahan background. 
What do they do best? They run the football. Go ahead and get yourself a really good run blocker. Iki Kwamu to me is the better run blocker. But again, I'll say this, and I've said this for a while. I think that Tyler Linderbaum is an absolute freak. He is going to be the number one center in the NFL by the time it is year 2024. And you have done a really good job, Jets fans, of drafting centers in the past playing centers in the past. I mean, we talk about Nick Mangold and what he's been able to do. There's so many other names that we can name off on the top of that. But yeah, to me, that would be the pick. Like, I would immediately go Iki Kwame of the two. But if you're asking me from a tackle perspective, just straight up tackle for the next 10 years, I would go Evan Neal. Neal could play guard too, though, right? I mean, I know he played guard at Alabama. He could play guard. I have no doubt that he will transition to being a guard. But I personally view him better as a tackle. And I feel like that you're wasting him on the inside. And again, uh, to me... If you're wondering if you're going to keep George Fan, you want to keep him at a cost-affordable rate, and you want to be able to keep a cost-affordable guy in the draft, Iggy Aquama just makes more sense as a guard. And in my opinion, I think that, honestly, he can transition to both positions really well and make a flawless impact at your right guard position opposite of uh, age, age, um, ABT. Let's keep it rolling with your questions for Cole. If you got a super chat, you cut the line, and then all money goes right to Cole for being willing to come on every single week leading us up to the NFL draft. Esbon writes in, what's up, Jake and Cole, a.k.a. Kuiper 2.0. No. In the later rounds, you don't have Mel Kuiper's hair, Cole. You got the knowledge, but you don't got the hair. That's Jake, 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 Jake. Wait, let me just do that all day. In the later rounds, how deep is this draft class at corner safety and the tight end positions? Thank you. Loving this segment weekly. Thank you, Esmon Cole. I'll let you take the question. So cornerbacks, one I still got to study really well. Uh, there's a lot of names I think could really rise this upcoming week. Tariq Woolen out of UTSA is somebody who I think is going to go somewhere in like round four potentially, but also with a really strong week could be a top 60 player. Marcus Jones out of Houston, his ability as a return man. Like say you do lose Braxton Berrios, I would immediately be targeting this guy because if he can be a really good return man for you and take that place to Berrios, and he's a really good overall slot cornerback, I think that he's going to make a tremendous impact there. The safety position is one I actually think is a lot deeper than people are giving credit for. There's a lot of good names at the front. Lewis Seen, Jaquan Brisker, Kyle Hamilton, which we're not going to talk about because I know the Jets fans are very mixed on that one. But there are a lot of good safeties in this draft class. Jalen Petrie out of Baylor is one that I – he's my draft crush. I mean, I like, like to be able to watch him, I've seen him live before, but to be able to get up close and personal with him this upcoming week – I am very excited to go watch him play. I think that he is going to be someone that I'm very pumped to see. He reminds me a lot of a Buda Baker light. Uh, not going to be as good as Buda Baker, but probably can make that same traditional impact. Safety that plays more in the box, but is also really good in zone coverage. Someone who I think that can be a really tremendous impact in the run support, which is something that I think you need to upgrade at, especially. Um, I think Verone McKinley out of Oregon is a really nice name to watch for in rounds three and rounds four. Uh, I think there's a few other names that you can also see in that mix. Um, I'm blanking off the top of my head. Uh, there's the uh, kid from Georgia Tech who's actually going to be on the Jets roster that was just added. Something Carter. He's a really good, strong safety to watch for. Smoke Monday out of Auburn's another name. I think that maybe you could utilize him as a linebacker, maybe be that like space kind of guy. He's got maybe an amazing name. That yeah, alone. Smoke, I, I mean, remember. listen, you don't want that smoke. Especially on Monday Night Football. That would be, again, I, I'll tell all the jokes all the time with that. Uh, tight end position, though, is the one that I think that a lot of people are going to be talking about here. And I, I get it. The Jets want to get a tight end. In my personal opinion, if you don't go get Trey McBride early, I would immediately wait until day three. There's going to be a lot of names there. Jeremy Ruckert, I think, is going to be available in round four. I think Jake Ferguson is going to be available in round four. I think Dylan Calatera is going to be available in round five. I think that you can get Cole Turner in round five. I think you can go ahead and get somebody um, – uh, like the UCLA tight end, I'm blanking on his name right now. There's a lot of talent at these positions to where Charlie Kohler out of Iowa State, six foot six, red zone and effort. I mean, guy is awesome. I very much think that you can go get yourself a tight end. And I honestly wouldn't risk. I would not reach for a tight end if you're not going to go get Trey McBride because of, I just think that there's so much talent in rounds threes, four, and five that where if you go get Dalton Schultz in the offseason, why go ahead and risk it? Yeah, Greg Dulick. That's it. Greg Dulick from UCLA. Thank you, Jets Forever fam. There you go. All right, let's keep rolling with your questions here. If you got a super chat, you cut the line. But our guy Joshua had this point earlier. If Neil Hutchinson and Thibodeau go one, two, three in the draft, we should trade four for two of the Eagles' first round picks. Then we can grab Wilson at 10, Burks and Linderbaum with the Eagles' picks. So this is not really a question, but I thought it was an interesting scenario that potentially could play out. But here's the thing we have no idea if the Eagles even want to move up for. That's, yeah. 
like who are they moving up for a quarterback? Like they might trade for a veteran or they might just run it back with Jalen hurts and hope he gets better with a, a second full year starting. So, I mean, what do you make of this? Is this, is this a plausible scenario where the jets could trade back and end up with some of these players? Is it a possible scenario? I think it's possible. I mean, if the Eagles fall in love with, say, a George Karloftis or they fall in love with a Kayvon Thibodeau and they want to go ahead and upgrade, yeah, I mean, I would definitely think that you would have to give up two of your three first-round picks. Like, you immediately would have to give up, I think, 14. You immediately would have to give up 19. I don't think you'd be able to give up 15. Like, you couldn't get 14 and 15 for it or 15, 16, whatever. Yeah, 15, 16, my bad. 15, 16, you couldn't get that deal done, but you probably could get 15 and 19, 16 and 19 done. But they also have to be willing to trade up. I mean, like, like that's the reality about it. They have to be willing to trade up. And if they're not willing to trade up, then by all means, that's not going to happen. And then you see this Wilson, uh, they can grab Wilson at 10. I'm guessing Garrett Wilson. Thank you. I really do like him. And Burks and Linderbaum with the Eagles picks. If you draft Garrett Wilson, you're not going to get Traylon Burks. That's like kind of the reality factor. I think you're not going to double up a receiver. You have too many round. needs. Like you have too yeah. many needs right now to be able to double up on wide receiver. Uh, Linderbaum's not going to be available at pick 15. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to get him. I think before pick number seven. I honestly do. I don't think you will see the Giants take him at pick number five, but I do think you will see him get picked at pick number seven. So that's the reality of it. Um, I think if you were going to go offensive lineman, maybe you go get uh, Kenyon Green at Texas A&M to play your right guard position. That would be, I think, a really nice move for you guys long term. I think at that point, maybe you would even be willing to trade back to just solidify going and, you know, uh, securing the pick of Trey McBride in the later end of the first round. Maybe move one of those picks again, get maybe a third round pick out of that. But you have to be willing. I'm mean, like, 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 like the reality is I love that you are aggressive. I love the fact that you're so into trying to go get that pick. But you have to be willing. You have someone has to be willing to go make that move. And I just don't see the Eagles being that team to make that move. I really just don't. Super chat from Mr. Majix. George Fan has emerged as a solid starting left tackle. What is his market value and salary and or draft picks? Well, his salary is 10.5 million. They could pick yeah. up the option and bring him back. And that's a steal for a guy that was a really good left tackle this year. George Fan proved he could play that position. He's not Makai Becton when Becton's healthy, but he's damn good and was an absolute force this year. And the second he got hurt, you saw this Jets offensive line just crumble in several of their late season losses. So Fant should be back. Becton's coming back. And that's why I call at number four. My philosophy remains either get the edge rusher at four, get after the quarterback or help the quarterback. O-line helps the quarterback. Wide receiver helps the quarterback. So my dream scenario, assuming Thibodeau's not there at four, is tackle at four, who maybe also could play guard for a year, and then wide receiver at 10. I still stand by that. I think that's a wrong take by it, but I, again, in my personal opinion, I, I just look at this. If you're going to go offensive line, Iki Kwamu has got to be the pick at pick number four. To me, that like that's the need because if you feel comfortable enough with center, uh, with Connor, uh, it's Connor McGovern, right? He, he'll be back as the center, right? Yeah, got, so yeah you, they can bring him back if they so want. It, so if you feel comfortable with Connor McGovern, I, I don't see taking Linderbaum. I don't. I just don't see the pick right there. I, I see Iki Kwamu immediately because it does help out with the offensive line. And the wide receiver, again, to me, it really comes down to one of two things. Do you believe that there is a game-changing wide receiver? I personally do. It's Garrett Wilson and Traylon Burks. Those are my number one and number two. I think both would be immediate value picks, especially at pick number 10. But I also got to look at the cornerback position. You look at Stephon Diggs. You know that New England is going to make a run for a, pick, uh, you know, for a receiver. Jalen Waddle. You know that Miami is going to be interested in a wide receiver this offseason. You got to get a number one cornerback. And if there is not one available at pick number 35, pick number 36, you have got to get one there because there's going to be wide receivers available. So, I love the game plan. I think it's a smart game plan. Uh, if you walk away with Iki Ikwamu and George Karloffis at 10, that's an amazing draft. If you walk away with Garrett Wilson and Iki Ikwamu at picks number four and 10, that's an amazing draft. If you walk away with George Karloftis and Traylon Burks at pick number 10, I think that's an amazing draft. But you have to be solidified at every other position. I always think that if you want to get the best BPA, go to your offensive line, win in the trenches. Iki Ikwamu makes a lot of sense. Tyler Winderbaum makes a lot of sense. And Evan Neal makes a lot of sense. Mad Genius, you see it up there on the screen. Thanks for the super chat, Mad Genius. Who's the best linebacker in the draft? I believe you're a Devin Lloyd guy. I think you hit on Devin that. Lawyer. Devin Lloyd. Devin Lloyd is 100% my favorite player at the linebacker position. I think that Kobe Dean is a 
Excuse my language. He's a piss missile. He is going to fly out at you, and he is going to make a lot of stops in the run. I think that the coverage skills of what you saw this past season uh, from Devin Lloyd, especially improving from that middle linebacker spot, is going to be tremendous value. I really do think that right now when you look at Devin Lloyd, he's a sideline to sideline player. You can play him as the Sam. You can play him as the Will. You can play him as the Mike. You can play him against run support. He led the country this past season in tackles for losses. So when I look at that, I just view him as a better player. I think that he's an overall better linebacker. But Nicobe Dean is not that far behind out of Georgia. I saw someone say Chad Mumma in the draft class. Uh, Chad Mumma for me is a third round pick, uh, but the guy absolutely crushed it. Guy is a uh, led the uh, led the FBS in tackles with like 142. Uh, Senior so Bowl I'm, guy too. So so you know what? And you know what's really interesting? He's really good in coverage. Like if you go back and watch some of his games. He reminds me a lot of his former teammate, Logan Wilson. Logan Wilson has done a really nice job for the uh, Cincinnati Bengals this past year as the middle linebacker. Uh, I think that if you go ahead and address that in round three, Chad Mama would be an absolute wonderful fit. And I think that he would be an immediate upgrade for your, for your defense. James wants to know, is linebacker at 10 a possibility? Do you see Lloyd or do you see, I don't know, Nakobe Dean going that high? I think if the Jets end up with one of them, it would be in a trade-down scenario. I think that they could. I would not be surprised if that was the pick. You better have upgraded at wide receiver. You better have upgraded on the offensive line. You better have upgraded at uh, cornerback. You better have upgraded at a lot of different positions just because linebacker to me is just a little bit too rich right there. And you need weapons for Zach Wilson and you need, and you need protection for Zach Wilson and you need to be able to address rushing the quarterback like Josh Allen, like Tua, like Mac Jones, like all the other quarterbacks in the AFC but if you do that, I mean, let's be real. If you're looking for the Fred Warner type linebacker, I mean, to me, Devin Lloyd fits that bill. He's really good in coverage. He's really good in run support. You would move CJ Mosley to that Drake Greenlaw type player and it make a lot of sense. But at the same time, in my personal opinion, you got to trade back. If you're trading back to like, say, 15, 17, something like that, I 100% would be in, in, interested in taking Devin Lloyd. But I, I just don't think number 10, and especially with what you have, like what other needs you have to address right now, You got to be able to get that. Sorry. Like, to me, that's just a little too rich. Here's what I need from all of you watching right now. We got 208 of you watching. If you're new to the show, hit the uh, the subscribe button on the right-hand side of your screen. And if you like the show, you like what you're seeing and you're already subscribed, then hit the like button. As of now, we only have like 30 likes and we got 203 people watching live. More likes helps the YouTube algorithm show this video to more people. It means Cole Thompson can continue to come on every week. And if you want more coverage from Cole, his Twitter link, his Twitter account, I should say, is linked in the bio or the description for the video. It's at Mr. Cole Thompson if you want to follow his draft coverage throughout the offseason. But do me a favor, like this video, and tell all your friends to like this video and watch the show. And that's how we can continue to grow and have daily Jets video content throughout the offseason. Cole, this question here, and we'll start to go a little more rapid fire here because I know you're up against it. So I want to get to as we many We got about questions. 20 minutes. So get as many questions as you can. Remember, Super Chat, you move right up to the top, and I want to answer your question as soon as possible. So go ahead and get that Super Chat in. Like a dollar. Like, like, like what a couple. No, you're selling yourself buy short. Coffee. Buy my coffee. Do that. No, no, hundred bucks a super chat. You're selling yourself short, man. Let, let's let, let's make you rich in this video. I kid, but a just super buy chat. Buy me a cup of coffee, guys. I, I again, I live off this. I literally don't sleep. So go ahead and just make me have a more caffeine addiction. Come on, super, super chat. You cut the line. Chase writes in. Cole, your thoughts on Sky Moore? He has four point two four speed. Um, so I have heard that he has. 4.24 speed. I think it's actually more like a 4.33. I think he's a really good burner. I mean, and again, you look at some of these kids out of Western Michigan. I mean, what they've been able to do in the last few years is really impressive. Uh, Dwayne Eskridge was one, and then before him was Corey Davis. Uh, I think that he's a really good player. I think that he's going to have to really show that he's more than just a speed guy. But I do like him. I do think that if you were going to go get a vertical threat in like rounds three, rounds four, this would be a really nice targeted target. Um, until I see him up in uh, Indianapolis for the combine, right now he's probably about a round three guy. But again, that, that, that speed, it's one of those things. He's not 4 2, though. Again, I, and somebody, I see someone in the comments saying he isn't 4 2. He's more about like a 4 3 4. Ray with a great comment, and Ray's awesome because he watches us from the Dominican Republic every day. Hey! He wants to know what does Cole think of Zion Johnson as well as Washington's Jackson Kirkland as possible third round picks? Zion Johnson's not going to be there in the third round. You would have to get him in the second round, in my personal opinion. Uh, I've talked to a couple of offensive line scouts as well. They believe that his upside is tremendous. They love him as a run blocker. They think that he has really good footwork, and they do think that he is improving as a pass protector. This past season, when they had to switch up the quarterback 
quarterbacks because Phil Dracovic missed a lot of time with that injury. He did a phenomenal job blocking for the other guy. I forget his name. And Jeff Halfley has raised about him. He would be a really nice fit for you guys at your right guard position in round two. But I don't think he's going to be available in round three. Uh, Jackson Kirkland, he's a name that I think is going to be a tackle more than an offensive, I mean, than a guard. Maybe you can play him at guard. If you're going to go with that kind of like hybrid player, Darian Kennard out of Kentucky makes a little bit more sense. Physical guy uh, has a motor and has a mouth on him. He loves it. Uh, Loves ish talking to other players on the offensive line, especially after plays. I think that he'd be a really nice addition for somebody who is trying to build that Mauler mentality. Um, that would be my guy in round two. If he follows you in round three, make that like, like I'd trade up. Like, if he's available at the end of round two, I would trade up to go get a guy like Darian Kennard. Super chat coming in here from Jose. Cole, there's a coffee right there. Love your guys' content. What do you think if the Jets come out of the draft with Iguano, Linderbaum, Jameson Williams, and Trevor Walker? I'm guessing you mean Trayvon Walker from uh, Georgia probably being the guy for the defensive lineman. Um, that that's that in my opinion is a phenomenal draft. Like that to me is an absolute baller draft. But where what are you doing? Are you trading up for Jamison Williams and what are you giving up? Because that's that's the biggest question mark. Trayvon Walker is a name that I know a lot of people are saying is a tweener guy. They don't know if they can play him at defensive end. They don't know if they can play him at defensive tackle. They don't know where he really measures in right now. So it's going to be really important to see his measurables at Indianapolis, what he's been doing in the offseason. So if you're going to play him as a defensive lineman, this uh, I mean, as a defensive uh, tackle or something like that, that might actually solve your problem with JFM because signing him to a three year deal. Um, you're going to have to trade up for Jamison Williams. That's, I think, the biggest thing right now is that he's not going to be available, especially if his surgery went as well as it, you know, as well as people are saying that it did. And if he doesn't lose that speed, and by losing that speed, let's be abundantly clear, that means that he's running instead of a 4-2-9, he's running a 4-3-5 or something like that. That's what not losing your speed is. If you have that, he's 100% going to be available for you. Uh, Eki Ikwamu, of course, I've already said, I think is the – most versatile of these tackles, offensive line kind of players, play him at guard, play him at left tackle, play him at right tackle, really going to run support, getting better every single day as a pass protector. And Linderbaum to me is our, honestly the guy who is, and I hate this term, I really do, because they've never played a damn snap. Generational talent, if there is a generational talent at a position, Tyler Linderbaum is absolutely the guy. So to me, that's an A plus talent, but I just don't see how you're getting all four guys without giving up at least a second round pick to where either Williams or Trayvon Walker would be off the board. Linderbaum to me is, is, is that guy. And how often do centers become bust? Like it seems like a pretty safe position in the draft, at least in recent years. Like I can't think of a, a center that was, that was a bust, like a first round pick that was a bust. But that's the thing is that uh, Billy Price is probably the biggest one. Billy Price mm. has not turned out into anything. And he was a pick by the Cincinnati Bengals. If like, if Linderbaum fell all the way there, I mean, that's that like, that's the blessing that Joe Burrow absolutely deserves. Like that's what, and so, so that's the point. If like Joe Burrow deserves to have that guy, why does Zach Wilson not deserve to have that guy? And again, I don't think Connor McGovern did a bad job this year from what I saw from him and reps. I think that you can always upgrade. And again, you're going to pass on the center because if you have a center, that's no, like, don't, yeah. like, don't do that. McGovern was solid this year, but if the Jets took Linderbaum, I wouldn't criticize them. You just solved your center position for the te for the next ten years. You have, if not longer, yeah, like, if not longer. AVT solves your left guard position for the next ten plus years. He was amazing as a rookie. He was their best player. So yeah, I mean, build it in the trenches. That's what Joe Douglas said he was going to do, and he's taken an offensive lineman in the first round so far in his first two drafts with the Jets. Mad Genius writes in, do you think Jameson Williams lasts till the second round, Cole? No, not at all. No, absolutely not. There, there, there's no chance. There's going to be a team that's going to be interested in him. There's going to be a team that sees his speed. There's going to be a team that sees what he can do. There's going to be a team out there that absolutely does not care about the injury. He is going to go in the first round. You are going to have to trade up and go get him. Word wants to know, and thanks for the super chat word. You got Thibodeau at four. I mean, sign me up for that word. Garrett Wilson and Gardner are there at 10. Who do you take? And he also says, great job, guys. Love the show. Like and subscribe. That's right. Word is telling you all to like and subscribe to this program. Like the video down below. That's the thumbs up icon. It's really easy. It's free. We're not asking for money. You hit the like button. Boom. You've helped the YouTube channel grow. And I would argue if you don't like this video, you don't like America. So I think most of most of you guys, I would hope, like this great country. Make sure you hit the like button. Anyhow, on a serious note, what do you make of this scenario? Garrett Wilson and Sauce Gardner are both there at 10. This is a tough question to ask, Cole, because I don't know what the Jets did at this point in free agency. Like, if you tell me they traded for Calvin Ridley or Amari Cooper or they signed Mike Williams, maybe receiver at 10 is not as much as a need, and you can take Sauce Gardner. So my personal opinion 
It comes down to free agency, but how do you see this playing out of this scenario presented itself? For starters, if you don't like this video, then you probably just like beans, rice, Jesus Christ, and Byron. So guess what? If you don't like this video and you don't like Jake Asman, you probably are someone who needs to get A-O out of here. But <laughs> you're talking about my number one wide receiver and my number one cornerback being available. That's like picking between me and my, my two dogs. Like that's – and you've met Max and Paisley. That's like I, I can't do it. It's – uh. Again, it does come down to free agency, though. If you trade for a Calvin Ridley, I see someone in there asking about Calvin Ridley is the target to like to go after. Um, no, I think DJ Moore from Carolina is actually the target to go after. If they can, if they're willing to trade with him, they're willing to get a price out of there. I a hundred percent. I'll trade them back him. the pick they gave the Jets. Yeah, for I would. <laughs> Why not? Like that, that's what I would do. They need a second round pick. I would go give up DJ Moore. And again, you need weapons. Like you need that. That would be my guy to go after over Calvin Ridley because of he's a little bit younger, and I do think that he has a little bit more of that physicality that you need more than the speed that you need. Uh, but it really does come down to that. Sauce Gardner, in my opinion, is absolutely the guy that I would take. I think that Garrett Wilson is a premier player. I think what I really love about Garrett Wilson is he's not fast, but he's quick. He's really quick. Between him and Chris Alave, Alave is really fast and is that vertical burner downfield. Uh, Wilson is that guy that's going to be a high catch ratio guy. I honestly think that he is somebody who um, – Probably fits more of like that short route, but then does a really good job after the catch. That's what he's been really known for. And I would love to see him in a Jets uniform. Um, coin flip. I mean, honestly, coin flip. And uh, just like how Buffalo Bills got screwed over, uh, maybe you get screwed over by taking Garrett Wilson because it's heads, or you get screwed over taking Todd Gardner, who doesn't transition because it's tails. No. And by the way, I see that comment out real fast. Mike Thomas, no, you are not trading. Yeah, I would not trade for Mike Thomas whatsoever. Yeah, I, I think the question of 10 is really influenced by what they do in free agency because I could see them taking Linderbaum at 10 if he's there if they filled wide receiver in free agency or the trade market. Like, And I also could see the scenario that exists where they don't take a receiver at 10 because they feel comfortable with their depth going into the draft and then they use a second-round pick in a loaded wide receiver class on a guy there. And also, Joe Douglas traded up last year, so don't rule out him trading back into the first round with the extra draft capital and using that to get – you know, a wide receiver at the end of the first round that's slipping. So, so much of these questions will be, I believe, decided by what exactly happens uh, in free agency for the draft. This question here I wanted to get to because this was an interesting name that I saw that Daniel Jeremiah had, uh, the Jets taking at number 10. It is the cornerback. Where am I? I'm trying to I know to who you're this. talking about. It's, it's Trent McDuffie, right? Yeah, someone asked about it. Yeah. I'm trying to find that. There's too many questions coming in, which is great. It means we have a great audience, but I, Keep I can't. Can't find who said it, but give me your thoughts on McDuffie while I try and find the question. Trent McDuffie reminds me a lot of Tredavious White. Uh, very small guy, but can play on the outside. Uh, but the biggest thing is that you have to realize now more than ever, you don't lo you no longer have a base 4-3 defense. You no longer have a base 3-4 defense. You play with the nickel back. Your nickel defender is 100% a starter in today's NFL. So no matter what you would do, you would have to play him. Like He would immediately be a great option in the slot. He has the capability to play on the outside. I'm very excited to see his measurables in Indianapolis. I want to see his ability to turn. Uh, I want to see his change of direction and his ball skills. But I do think that he's a really good player. Uh, I would not take him at number 10. That's just my personal opinion. I think Sauce is better. I think Andrew Booth is better. I think that um, uh, even Derek Stingley, with all of his question marks, is better right now than Trent McDuffie. But I do have to admit, if you are going to try and upgrade, if you get a cornerback on the outside and then you want to go ahead and get somebody to play your nickel position, look at K1 Williams. I mean, K1 Williams is an absolute stud and was an absolute freak of nature for Robert Sala the last two years that he was in San Francisco. You could see a very similar thing with Trent McDuffie. You could absolutely see that happening. I just do not like it at 10. You know, what's interesting is the Niners don't have great corners, but their defense is elite because they have a great pass rush. They have some good safeties, good linebackers. And like the Jets this year, they went young at corner to get all those guys experience, and they found some pretty good ones. And obviously Bryce Hall, who was a fifth-round pick two years ago, he had a very good season. Uh, you look at what they did in the draft with Michael Carter this past year. He played well. You know, some other guys, too, that are, you know, a part of that. That secondary, I don't know if the Jets would go corner that high. I think maybe they sign someone in free agency that's a veteran that could be part of that group, and then they take another flyer in the mid-rounds on a corner because they've had success the last couple of years finding you know some diamond in the rough players there. Again, it really does it does matter what you do in free agency. If you go ahead and address the wide receiver position very early on, you're probably going to go corner. If you address the quarterback really uh, really early on, you're probably going to go uh, with the likes of a uh, wide receiver in that sense. You remember, it was like a few years ago uh, when Devontae Parker and Trey Waynes was coming out. I had been told by multiple people that both the Minnesota Vikings and the Miami Dolphins like Trey Waynes and they liked, the, um, they liked uh, Devontae Parker. 
And whoever went one way was going to go the other way. And then eventually it happened that way. Devontae Parker went to the Miami Dolphins and Trey Waynes went there. So it's the same thing. Like if you upgrade one, you're going to get the other. Question here from Yoeb Bulla. Thoughts on David Bell, the Purdue wide receiver. So I'll close it. Uh, not close it out my bad. I'll answer two questions at the same time because I see someone. Uh, Warren's is talking about George Pickens. Um, I think that Bell is a premier route runner. I think that he is going to slowly mer- move up draft boards and get into that conversation for wide receiver six, wide receiver seven. Probably a top 40 player when it's all said and done. Definitely a name I think the Chicago Bears would be interested in. If you don't go wide receiver round one, he would be a name I was interested in. But George Pickens, from a talent perspective going into this year, was arguably the best wide receiver in the class. He's physical. He has the ability to win at the top of the catch. He has good speed. He has great route running. He is good at tracking the football. And he's a really good overall player that you can use in that physical standpoint, which I think the Jets need. If I was coming down to it, if I trust that George Pickens is going to be really healthy and back at full strength 100%, because he did play a little bit down the stretch for Georgia, if he's back 100%, I would 100% go after a guy like uh, George Pickens at pick number 38 over David Bell. But I do like David Bell a lot. I do think that he is slowly going to emerge as that pick number wide receiver seven, wide receiver eight kind of tier. No doubt. You see the comment here from Word talking about George Pickens that Cole hit on as well. A couple more, Cole, because I know you got to go. The Art of Pickens. Get him in. Get him in. Get him in. All right, well, rapid-fire answers. Here we go. The art of pimping with the super chat. With the way the number one defense was destroyed, do you see the Jets using these first four picks exclusively on offense? That in reference to the Bills having the number one defense and Mahomes finding a way to still win that game with 13 seconds to go. Do I see them using all four? No, I don't, because I still look at the defense as a whole. Uh, there's a lot of players that defensively they could go ahead and upgrade with. Carl Loftus on one side, Thibodeau on one side if he falls. Uh, at the cornerback position, I think McDuffie would be available. I think that uh, Sauce Gardner is going to be available. I think that you could also look at Andrew Booth, and you can look at Derek Stingley. They're going to go ahead and address at least one position defensively, but I would not be shocked if they upgrade the offensive line with one. I would not be shocked if they go get a tight end with the other pick, and I would not be shocked if they go get a wide receiver in round two, maybe a David Bell, maybe a George Pickens, maybe one of those guys, maybe go get Trey McBride as well, maybe go get um, Iki Kwamu. But I do think one of those positions is going to be used defensively, whether that be Carl Loftus, Sauce Gardner, Andrew Booth, um, even Devin Lloyd. I mean, Devin Lloyd and Kobe Dean could very well be in play. And I do think that both of them would make a lot of sense, especially at the linebacker spot, since you're looking for your quote unquote uh, uh, Fred Warner type. So that, like, that's my opinion is I, they will 100 percent go with that. Keith wants to know your thoughts on Brandon Smith, the linebacker from Penn State. Is he an option at number 38? Way, 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 way too high. I think that uh, he's probably about a third round linebacker. He was a guy that I think started to really fall off towards the end of the season. I know that Brandon Smith was a name that people really were high on going into. I didn't see it. I know a lot of scouts said the same thing. I think his measurables are going to be a really big deal. How he runs the 40 time, what's to do with the three cone drill, how's his agility. But overall, I would not take him at 38. I maybe would, you know, if he's available in the third round, that's a lot more, you know, a lot more of a pick that I'd be okay with. I'd actually be more tempted to take Chad Mama at pick number 38 than Brandon Harris at this point. Thoughts on the running back class, Cole? Give us your top three running backs. So top three overall, I'll give you my top three, and I'll give you the one I want the Jets to take. So that way it makes everyone happy. Number one for me is Kenneth Walker. He does a load of everything, really good between the trenches, home run speed, got good hands, got good vision. I think that he absolutely came on strong. I would love to see him in a power running offense. I really like Isaiah Spiller coming out of Texas A&M. I think that he has great vision, great agility. He's got good home run speed. I love what he can do in the open field. And he's a mauler. I mean, you watch him get that extra super, like those extra few yards just by lowering his head. Head. one of those guys that you really cannot miss on and then Brees Hall out of Iowa State I love Brees Hall I think that what he's been able to do since coming into the program helping lead the league and uh, lead the league in rushing one year then be able to go get somebody uh, I mean a score a touchdown in four straight consecutive games to me that's absolutely phenomenal but the guy that I want the Jets to pair up with the uh, likes of Michael Carter I've been very high on him. I will say it once again. I will continue to say it. I want them to go get Jerome Ford out of Cincinnati. You need a mauler. You need somebody who can be physical. You need somebody who can go ahead and win at the line of scrimmage. You need somebody who can be good on third down. But do not sleep on his home run threat mentality. Everyone wants to talk about his physicality. Watch him when he plays as a home run guy. Absolute baller monster in that aspect. I would love for the Jets to use a fourth round pick on him. If he's there, go pair him with Michael Carter. Don't spend money on running backs. Don't go ahead and draft guys really early on. 
take this kid and prosper. I know Tyler Beatty is in the comment section too. I like Tyler Beatty a lot. I just think that Michael Carter, for what you want to utilize him for, probably is a better fit to go get a more powerful runner. That's where Jerome Ford comes in. John wants B. John Robinson next year. Yeah, and I want a million dollars. If you're really good, you're not going to be able to get B. John Robinson. Let's just like, 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 put this into consideration. Do you want to be good at football or do you want B. John Robinson? Because B. John Robinson is a generate hate that word. He's an elite running back prospect. He is going to go very early next year. A lot of scouts would said that he would have gone very early this year, like a top 10 pick. If you want to be good, then you're not going to be able to get him. Jack would love Ruckert in the fourth. Is he there in the fourth? I think so. As of right now. Now, again, in a week from now, that this whole thing could change. He could end up being a late third round pick. He can end up being potentially a very high end third round pick. But I think as of right now, uh, he 100% would be available in the fourth because of there's not enough film on him with his pass catching. And that's one of those things where I look at and it, it, that does hurt him a little bit. Isaiah likely probably goes before him. I think that Jake Ferguson's in that same range as him. I think Charlie Kohler with a really good weekend does a really nice job at that. And then uh, I, I think that Trey McBride's off the board and so is Jalen Weidemeyer. A couple more. This one's from Hawk came in earlier. He wants to know about Kayvon Thibodeau, his character and personality. If you have any concerns or questions about it. I, I mean, I'm an Alabama alum. And uh, Alabama's business school is ranked number three in the country. So we're not all idiots who just went there. Ding, 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 ding. Like everyone likes to make fun of Alabama because of we, you know, it's backwards trash, but uh, no, it's really not. They have one of the best nursing schools programs out there, but I mean, I really don't have any problems with this character and personality. I think that especially when you're living in a big city like New York, uh, you're definitely going to need to have a vibrant personality. And a guy like that actually probably does make sense. If he hits the quarterback, I don't care what his personality is. If he gets to the quarterback, something the Jets have not done since John Abraham was on their defensive line. Yeah. I, I, I really do not care. That's how I look at it. Um, let's see. We'll do a couple more, Cole. Thanks for being with us for as long as you always are every week. Let's see. Uh, I think we've talked about him before. I always mispronounce his name. The BYU running back, Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, Tyler Jr. Um, I like him. I, I think that I think that this is a guy who's probably around four, around five, kind of guy. physical guy. Really good on third down. Really good getting those extra yardage. I very much think that he'd be a very nice fit. I think that what you wanted to see from Mike McDaniel with Trey Sermon this year, that would be what you would want to be able to get for the likes of a guy like Tyler Jr. Let's see. This one is from uh, Yuri. Lezo, I don't know how to pronounce that name. Some of these names, what are we doing, man? <laughs> what are any options for a center in the second or third rounds? Obviously, Linderbaum's the headliner, but if the Jets want to take a center, is there a Creed Humphrey in the mid-rounds this year? If I had to go with one Alex uh, Alec Lindstrom out of uh, Boston College, he's probably the next best one. I think that he's a really good, uh, really good at setting up the play. High IQ, high motor, good at getting maulers. Uh, he did. Uh, he was there when he uh, he was there as a starter his first year when he was blocking for AJ Dillon, who has become a really nice fit for the Green Bay Packers. I wouldn't be shocked if they go after a guy like him, but that to me is probably the only guy I would go in rounds two or three as of now. Javid wants to know, Cole, who do you suspect is going to be the biggest riser on the Jets board after the Senior Bowl? I think it's Trey McBride. I, I really do think it's Trey McBride. And I do think that Trey McBride is going to make an immediate impact. They have him on the roster. They're going to be able to see him really up close and personal. They're going to be able to think that he is somebody who is a name that probably can be a good fit. And honestly, I would not be shocked to see them package a second and third round pick to move up into the 20s or somewhere to be able to go get him. I don't think that they'll take him at 10 but I do think that he is worthy of getting into the conversation of a first rounder. I think that that's the guy they fall in love with. If I'm going to go with another name that you probably want to see, I think in the sense of Chad Mama, in the sense of what they're looking for at that linebacker position moves up from maybe a third round pick to a second round pick. Maybe they feel comfortable moving back to be able to select him, but I do think that they do need linebacker help. I do think that they do need to get at least another name out there, but I do think that McTray McBride's going to be the name that they fall in love with and probably want to trade back up into the first round to get him. Couple more here as we wrap up. Hassan Haskins from Michigan. Your thoughts on him? I think he's a nice fit. I think he's a good fit for what you're trying to go ahead and get after, but I just need to see a little bit more of him. I do like his speed. I do think he has a little bit more pop in the open field, but I do really like him for a nice fit for what you're trying to run with Mike LaFleur. Jack Gaming has a non draft question, but it involves the Jets maybe trading for former Jet Demario Davis because the Saints are maybe looking to rebuild. I'm not sure. We'll see how it plays out in New Orleans. I mean, Demario Davis is a beast. If you told me they brought him back, they never should have let him walk in the first place. I said, you never let him, you should never let him walk, and I had to pay a price to go get him back. Yeah. Um, Mike McCagden, baby, one of the greats. I, I, I just, 
don't think you can offer what they want for him back. I mean, cause you're also going to take on that salary. So you're not just going to be able to give up a, um, you know, for a really good linebacker still in the NFL. I mean, he's a little bit older, but still a really good linebacker. You're not going to be able to give up like a fifth round pick. You got to be able to give up at least probably a fourth or maybe even a compensation, like a compensation pick or something like that. Are you okay with getting that? Or would you rather get a guy on roster control for $2 million that's going to be in the league for hopefully another five to eight years or something like that? That's the biggest argument, I think. You have to go with that. Nolan with one of the last questions. Thoughts on Christian Harris since Cole, you're, of course, an Alabama alum. I like him. I don't think that he is an actually first-round talent. There's a lot of people who are a lot higher on him. I think that he probably could have benefited going back another year if he really wanted to. But, you know, if he's available in round three, I'd take a swing at him. Uh, Let's go about three more. Get three more in really fast. All right. Any chance Hamilton falls to 10? Yeah, 100% he can fall. He's a safety. That's the biggest problem. I just don't think that he will, but could he fall to 10? Absolutely. And if you get him at 10, that's the home run pick of the draft. There's people who have him as the number two or number three player on their big draft boards, but because of the position he plays, they're just going to pass on him. If you get him at pick number 10, yeah, that's an absolute steal. Word wants to know, what would it realistically take to get, a, uh, to get DJ Moore from Carolina? I think you'd have to get back at least the second round pick. I think immediately you'd have to get back the second round. Pick. Why are they trading him though? Like Matt rules on the hot. No, no, no. I don't think it, I don't think that they would trade him. That's the problem. But if you're going to rebuild, which it does feel like David Tepper is willing to do whatever to get more draft picks to help build his roster in the right direction. They're going to a contract year with him. You have money to spend in free agency. You're going to have to give up at least a second round pick. And again, there's scouts out there who believe that from a talent perspective, you maybe have to give up a first round pick. I wouldn't, but if I can get a second round pick and maybe a fifth round pick back for him, I think that'd be fine. Uh, two more real fast. And uh, um, I see which one. Which uh, one do you want? Um, let's see. Uh, let's do uh, Smoke Monday. I think that Smoke Monday is a really good line. I think he's a really good hybrid player. I think you could probably play him as probably a mix of a linebacker spot. But you drafted that kid out of Auburn last year to kind of be that guy. And he didn't really pan out. Do you really want to do that again? I need to see a little bit more of him. But I do think that he is a nice little hybrid player. Probably better as a safety. Um, and uh, one more. Uh, not the coffee coming your way. Thank you very much, Isman. I really do appreciate it. Uh, one more. All right. Well, anyone. Anyway, anyone. Here's the last one. If you love America, you got to hit the like button. And also, you got to follow Cole on Twitter. I put I put the link in the description. It's at Mr. Cole Thompson. He's dropping his top 50 senior bowl prospects on Sports Illustrated's websites throughout the country on Monday. We pre- we previewed that at the beginning of the video if you're joining us late. Check that out when we wrap up. Uh this just came in though. So it is yeah. a super So we'll do this question. one. This last one last one guys. And if you this want to it. follow me on Twitter and I will answer your questions. Message me on Twitter. I'll answer your questions. Traylon Burks or Garrett Wilson at 10? Gun to head today. Gun to head today, Garrett Wilson. But I would not be shocked with either one. I think that both really fit. Both are guys that you really need to utilize. Both are physical. Both are guys that I think are good after the catch. The biggest thing I think that Traylon Burks is going to be, and the reason why I think Traylon Burks may be the pick, this past season, Kendall Brown started utilizing him on jet sweeps, and you watch what happened with Debo Samuel. There's a lot of people now comparing Debo to Traylon Burks. I think he's a little bit bigger. I think he's a little bit more physical than Debo. One six foot three, one six foot one. I do think that Traylon Burks would be a really nice addition for Mike Lafleur. I just like Garrett Wilson as a route runner. I like Garrett Wilson over the top. I think Garrett Wilson's a little bit more of a clean, polished hands guy, but. Either player, I think, is an absolute, really, really, really good fit. I also think that A.J. Brown is a better comp than Debo Samuel. So I see Nolan D. talking about that. I view him more as an A.J. Brown because of his physicality, but a lot of people do think that he can be utilized like Debo Samuel. There you have it. So as Ray writes, if you love America, you'll hit the like button for Jake and Cole, people. So hit the like button. That's the thumbs up icon. If you're new to the show, if you like the Jets, if you like the NFL draft, if you like America, hit the subscribe button, that red subscribe button on the right-hand side of your screen. Just click it. Boom, you're signed up. And anytime we post a video, it will come up right on your page. Cole, before we wrap up, self-promote yourself, my guy. You're going to be at the Senior Bowl next week. We're going to do another one of these next week, breaking down what you've seen at the practices and, of course, the game. But tell people uh, what you got coming up this week and where they can find you. My top 50 players for uh, the Senior Bowl going into this class is 100% going to be upgraded on Monday right before the game. I'm very excited for it. I'm very excited for that. There's a lot of players out there that I think are going to be superstars. A lot of names the Jets are going to fall in love with. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Mr. Cole Thompson. You can go ahead and give me a follow. Give me a like. If you go ahead and message me, I'll answer whatever questions I can, uh, uh, you know, privately on Twitter. Go ahead and do that. Uh, very excited to be down in Mobile. Very excited to see the New York Jets and what they can do. I really like 
like the Jets. I really like how many picks that they have. And I think that there's a lot of talent, a lot of talent that you can already pair with really good talent, like Elijah Moore. Guy we never really even talked about yet. Elijah Moore, really good player. And I was very shocked that he was out there. So can't wait to be up there at Mr. Cole Thompson. Give me a follow on Twitter. You got a message? You like this stuff? You don't even have to super chat me. I'll just message you on Twitter privately. There you go. Tell Robert Seller I say hi when you see him next week, all right? I, I will do so, and I'll tell Joe Douglas, go ahead and draft Tyler Linderbaum. Well, just tell him my message <laughs> the, My message is the following. Joe, I don't care what you do, but just make sure you draft good players. That's all I want, all right? <laughs> Tyler Linderbaum. <laughs> Hit the like button. Please subscribe if you don't already. He's Cole Thompson from Sports Illustrated, Sports Map Radio host. He is as good covering the draft as anyone. He's going to be a big star. He's the next Mel Kuyper Jr. You just don't know it yet, but now you do. So make sure you follow Cole on Twitter and check out his work in Sports Illustrated. Cole, always appreciate your time. Safe flight the Mobile. I think I'm seeing you later today at Drift because that's where my radio show is on location today. So I'll see you there. You're going to see me there. And uh, yeah, anybody who wants to message me, at Mr. Cole Thompson. Later, knuckleheads. There you go. Everyone have a great day. Back with more coverage throughout the week. Go Jets, and we'll talk to you soon.